tutorials I'm going to show you how to make a palace avatar such as one of these figurines that people are wearing to chat on the palace chat program. I'm not going into the idea of explaining what palace chat is etc. I'm just going to explain you in today's tutorial what an avatar is. Um, well basically what you see, it's not much else than that. And um, you can just turn any picture into one of the avatars you can see and wear them. So what you need is a computer, disk space availability to save a picture, very important these days. And so we're going to import one of our pictures. This guy here is going to be my tutorial on today's topic. Right, I use Photoshop. Um, you can use any photo editing software really like Coral. I know some people are using a software called GIMP, which I personally don't know or have any experience with. So I'm going to show you my way how to do it today. It's uh, Photoshop. And um, so as you can see, this guy here is way too tall. So sizing him down into the limitations of the given palace size availability to 20 over 220 would be he would turn out to be really small because you would have to get the whole size of him on there, which is way too big. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to crop him out. I'm going to crop his ass out. That's exactly what we're going to do. I usually go for a rectangle size. I think that here would make a lovely avatar. Just the torso and the top head. What you do is just crop it. And as a next step, you go and change him into the palace size. Which is... If it's not equal, you go for the one which is bigger with because it automatically turns down the other number with it. So if you go for 500, 200, 220, you see it takes the width with it because the height is the one which is bigger. So always go with the one which is bigger. There we go. 220 over 480 something. Now this is 100% view at the moment, which is way too big. I mean, not big enough, of course. Because so my computer, I don't know if it's the same for you, but about 400 is just about the right size to edit the picture and uh, what we actually have in mind with it now. Um, and so here's what we do. We start off by smudging out the skin. Now, the thing is, when you do the smudging part, um, you have to be very careful because there's a few bits and bobs that you want to know straight from the beginning that you can't or shouldn't do because it's going to fuck up the end result of the picture. And you see that pretty fast. So if we use the smudge tool here, um, you'll see that it looks beautiful when done uh, on skin. There we go. That's smudging. Just making a nice little minimal effect which is going to turn out really nice once the picture is finished this effect applies to skin and skin only please do yourself a favor and don't use it on the hair on fingers and on toes and don't do it with ears as an example do it with ears oh shit as you can see this is really fucked up right so we go back and what we do is we really keep focused on the skin so I'll do a bit of a forehead here he's got a lovely lightning on the skin which allows us to make it really even and smooth and nice maybe a little bit in here you'll get the experience with making avatars it's really learning by doing you know you do need a little bit of a help in the beginning to know exactly how to do it if you've never done an avatar but I'll show you how to make a neat avatar today so here we go a bit of a neck I'll leave the ear alone I really do I don't even touch it if I could I'd probably go and really perfectionize his top ear here which looks a little bit brighter than anything else it's not necessary it's just an avatar in the end nothing you'll be judged by well depends on who on chat sees you right so that's the smudging part done um that's already it now some people will just cut it out and import it into palace i personally think this is up to you if you think and some pictures really don't need any more further editing you just do that i like to do the smudging part and also my little extra is the sharpening tool which where you have to be easy with that because it's uh because it's quite 
it gives it a special effect, but it can also fuck it up because the sharpening tool is sharpening out the area you try to sharpen out. So you see, it doesn't take much until it goes really, I mean, of course, I'm really doing it in an extreme way here. But what you want to do is you want to take certain body parts and make them stand out of the picture. What I do most is a little bit of facial hair. He just has a little bit of a stubble, so I don't go crazy on it. Body parts like ears, bit of the eye, not too much because he's bright. It works a bit better if the character is dark. I go around some edges, sometimes a little bit of hair, nothing too crazy. Um, works good on skin, works sometimes also on clothes. I'm going to use it here, I probably wouldn't too much, just some wrinkles on the skin, uh, sorry, on the clothes look quite good. There we go. And I said, put that, perfect, he's done. All you need to do next is cut him out and um, you can do this however way you want it. The lasso tool, some people say it's for professionals, some people say it's for beginners, I think it's whatever you want it to be. There's the normal lasso tool, the polygonic lasso tool, and the magnetic lasso tool. I use the uh, polygonic one because that's a lot easier for me to use, um, because you decide which way it goes. The other one is like a magnetic lasso tool, so it automatically calculates the numbers in the picture and it just attaches itself which sometimes can fuck it up so I don't use that I go with my own direction and here we go you just start at a point and you go around and you just choose whatever selection you want to choose for the guy to be edited so that's the back part already done of his clothing then you go up into his hair. As you can see, I'm tending to cut out a little bit of the graphics rather than to risk to go into the other color. Like, I could easily slip into the background here, but I choose to rather cut out a little bit of his skin because you you won't see that on you won't see that on on the on the final product of the avatar when you import it. As you can see I, I choose this part here. This is also still his face but I'm just not going to risk to get any other colors included in, in, the, in the cutout version of the avatar. Simply because if you do that you import the avatar later on. For example this white bit here is very classic. If I were to choose that including in my edit that would import into Palace and this is 100% one of the parts of the avatar where afterwards you would have to edit this out because it would just look stupid on a background. So that's it. I choose select inverse because we don't want to cut out the guy, we want to cut out the stuff in the background. We don't need that. So what I do next is I release the picture so that I'm actually able to go and edit it without fucking anything up. I give it a new layer so that it has a background, put it up here so that's on top, and all I do is hit escape, dang, or delete, sorry, yes, it's delete, and that's the background done. So that's already it. This guy is ready to be saved and then exported. So um, I go down to the last picture, 469, 47, you just save the picture as you would. Important as a PNG, that is super duper important. Next you go into Palace, import the picture, go naked and you can wear it. Here you go. That's the new guy here that I'm going to be wearing as my latest avatar here on Palace. And so that, my dears, is how you import an avatar. Now, for the more extended version, you can also choose some special effects on the avatar, which is what I mostly do. So if I take or find a colored avatar like this guy here, I usually make a second edition or like a second version of it and just turn it into black and white because sometimes it looks really good to just lose some saturation 
or even the whole thing. So it's just a normal black and white. Very easy. It's a one step thing and you already have a new avatar in black and white. So you save it again wherever you want to save it on your hard disk. Go down. I usually save it as a A of the same number or a B or a C. Import that into Palace as well. Here we go. And you have a black and white avatar of the same version. Neat. Some people also like to go the extra extra mile, which is to color an avatar. So if you have a black and white avatar, you just select the selection roughly that you want to color. For example, his skin is supposed to stay black and white. But the rest, especially that top shirt, is supposed to get some color. So what you do is you go into, um, I think it was color balance. And you could give him a lovely, uh, what shall we go for? Let's say a little cyan, like this. You can also go crazy on the highlights and make it really bright. Here we go. That already gives it a whole new effect. Save that as well. Always as a PNG, never works as a JPEG. Well, I guess sometimes it does. No, it doesn't, it doesn't at all. 470B, here we go. And import that. So you're getting the idea now, this is how you import a palace picture. You can uh, easily color the avatar, it's very easily done. And you're all sorted. It's a good looking guy, good looking Ivy, and uh, the girls will be happy. And uh, don't forget, some boys too. Alright, see ya!